this time. May I pay my homage to the Triple Gem, the Buddha, the Dhamma, and Sangha. So before we do meditation tonight, I just would like to spend some 10 minutes giving you basic instruction how to practice meditation according to the four foundations of mindfulness. The first part, as you have learned, is the chanting. The chanting for Buddhists is not to pray like in some other religions because Buddhists do not ask some a great being to help. The Buddhists simply chant in order to develop concentration and at the same time they may take the opportunity to reflect on the Buddha's teaching. The chanting according to Theravada tradition is in Pali language. You may not understand the meaning or you may not follow when all the monks do chanting because you are not familiar with the way that we pronounce the word and also the way that we do chanting. And that is not really important at the beginning. You can't follow all the chantings we do here. If you come here regularly, then try to go along with the Buddhist monks. It may take a month or maybe longer than that, then you will be able to chant together with the monks. So basically, the purpose of chanting is to develop concentration and to reflect or the teaching of the Buddha. Because in the chanting, we mainly talk about what the Buddha has taught to his followers. If you don't understand the meaning, we can take this opportunity to concentrate on the chanting word. Although you can't do chanting, simply pay attention to the chanting words. That can help to improve your concentration. To begin with basic instruction on how to do walk, um, meditation. And we normally begin with walking meditation, but here we always begin with sitting meditation. In fact, it does not really matter whether you begin with walking or sitting meditation. The most important thing is how you can apply mindfulness into your practice. So mindfulness is very important, and this is the reason why that we call this method of meditation Four Foundations of Mindfulness. So what are the four foundations? Body, feeling, mind, and mind object. When you sit down, we can either observe on the rising and falling movements of the abdomen. When you breathe in, the abdomen is rising. When you breathe out, the abdomen, the abdomen is falling. Remember, breathe in and breathe out normally. Do not force the wind into your nostril. I think you can hear me from the back. Maybe better than with the microphone, yeah. Because I think this microphone might have some problem. <clears throat> when we sit down, for those who have no problem with um, sitting position, I just want to show you here. You can sit like this. Yeah. 
You can try. If you can't try, you may sit on the sofa behind you. Yeah, better than sit like that. Yeah. Yeah, you are allowed to sit on the sofa. Or you can do like this. This may be more flexible. Yeah, like this. The position of your body should be straight up, but not too stiff like this. And that's what calls tension. So simply breathe in, breathe out, and then find the balance of your body. The position of your hand, right hand on top of your left hand, the tips of your thumbs touch each other like this. If you sit in this position and then you feel uncomfortable, you may put both hands on your knee, even like this or like this. But the best position for sitting meditation is like this. So when we find the comfortable position when we do sitting, then we simply or slowly, mindfully close our eyes. When the eyes are closed, you see nothing. But your mind does not stop thinking. So as soon as the eyes are closed, then the mind starts wandering. This is normal. Why it is normal? Because that is the nature of the mind. The mind may be like the monkey. And the monkey usually lives in the forest, in the wood. And then one day, that monkey was caused by the hunter and put it in the cage. So imagine, and if you was that monkey, how would you feel? You feel that you lost your freedom. You have, you, you have no freedom. In the past, you normally go wherever you want to go. But now, somebody takes your freedom away. So Aroma is like a monkey in that sense. However, although the mind lies um, wandering, but we have the technique. So this technique called the application of mindfulness. How? Whenever the mind starts thinking or wandering, simply acknowledge it, observe it. So at the moment when you observe that mind, then the mind stops. Then bring the mind back to your rising and falling movements. Always bring the mind back to your primary object. We have two kinds of object, primary and <coughs> secondary. So the primary here refers to the rising and falling movements of the abdomen. Whereas the secondary refers to anything that is apart from rising and falling. Even the um, sound from outside, even distraction, agitation, or doubt, anything that happens. So those are regarded as secondary objects. So when we do sitting like this, the eye should be closed gently. <laughs> Do not create any tension when you close your eyes. Then breathe in, breathe out normally. Rising, falling, you know that. When the, the abdomen is rising, you note it in the mind arising. When the, the abdomen is falling, you note it in the mind falling. Keep observing rising and falling that occur naturally. As I said before, do not try to force the wind into your nose too. Simply breathe in and breathe out normally. 
but do not try to keep everything in control. Observe everything that comes and goes, and before you realize that your mind has gone somewhere else, just acknowledge it. Now I know that the mind is going away. Acknowledge it, thinking, thinking, and then bring the mind back. So in this way, it means we apply mindfulness into our practice. We use mindfulness as a rope. In order to train the monkey, we need to use a rope and then the, a post. It might be very difficult at the beginning to train monkey, but if you keep training it, and then one day the monkey will do whatever you want him to do. Like those who uh, train monkeys to uh, play in the circus, or like those who train mon monkey to climb up the coconut tree. It does not take a single day that we can train monkey to do anything we want. So, so also when we train our mind, it takes some time, it does not take a single day, or it does not take a, a single sit, and then you can do well in your meditation. After sitting, you may feel uncomfortable with your uh, sitting position, and for example, your leg may go numb, you may feel some pain, you may feel some back pain, or you may have a problem with distraction. So simply acknowledge it whenever your legs go numb. Acknowledge it. Numbness, numbness, or when you feel some pain, first acknowledge it. Pain, 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 until it becomes unbearable. Then you may change your posture slowly and mindfully. You don't need to open your eyes when you change your posture. And also when there is some distraction, acknowledge it, distraction, distraction, distraction. The moment when we observe distraction, distraction, the mindfulness is there. Distraction may be compared to water in the glass. This glass can be compared to our mind. So when we fill the glass with water, then we will say that that glass is full of water. This is like when the mind has distraction. If we observe rising, falling, and then just for a while, the mind goes away, we have distraction. At the moment when you know that you have distraction, acknowledge it, distraction, distraction. This is like a, you put the stone or the sand into that glass little by little. So every time when you observe rising, falling, and then distraction comes, acknowledge it, distraction, distraction, you have mindfulness as well. So the more we practice, the less we will have distraction. The more we observe, the less we have distraction. We don't need to worry why I can't sit still, why I can't keep my mind in control. No need to worry. Simply observe what is going on here and now. So in this way, day by day, you will see the progress in your practice. You improve your practice. And how can we evaluate our practice? You can evaluate, evaluate your uh, practice by yourself before you begin the practice. How you feel and what is your attitude towards things in your life? What is your emotion? What kind of emotion you normally have? But what happens after you uh, begin the practice? You may see some change in your emotion or in your attitude. So this means that when we practice regularly, there will be some change. You can 
You may become a calmer person. You may see things in a more positive way. In some situation, you may think from different angles. It's not only from one point of view that we can make any judgment. But before we make any judgment, we can think from different angles. It's not only because of that person. It's not because of me. But there are more than one causes. There are more than one conditions that allow one situation. So this is just an example when we practice. Eventually, when we practice regularly. And then we will learn to let go, let go of our own attachment. From the Buddhist point of view, whatever we attach is always brings pain or suffering. As ordinary person, we can't simply let go everything about us. But at least when something happens. We try to understand and learn to accept it, even it may take some times. So to do meditation, and now put both hands on your lap. Close your eyes. Breathe in, breathe out normally. Then observe rising and falling. If you don't say rising and falling, you may use your hand to touch to feel your belly. Breathe in, breathe out normally. So this is the practice of the mindfulness of body. What kind of body is it? Um, in the mindfulness of body. There are nine themes, and this is just one of them. To observe one of the four elements, and what are the four elements? Earth, water, fire, and air. When we observe rising and falling, we observe the body. In the theme of air element, when they breathe in, the abdomen is rising. This is because when they breathe in, our mm. diaphragm expands, and then it causes the bunching out inside our stomach. When they breathe out, and then we can feel the falling. So we use rising and falling as meditation object in order to develop mindfulness. What about feeling? When you feel happy, unhappy, or indifferent, acknowledge it as it is. Even after sitting for a while. And then you may develop pain or numbness. You don't like numbness or pain. That means unpleasant feeling occurs. So we simply acknowledge it. Pain, pain, pain or numbness, numbness. Sometimes the meditators may feel indifferent. Whenever you have this feeling. Acknowledge it as it is. So this is the way to observe feeling. And then what about the mind? I just want to give you some idea about how to、uh, practice the mindfulness of mind. When we concentrate on our mind, we will see that sometimes the mind is with concentration, sometimes the mind is without concentration, sometimes the mind is with anger. Or hatred, 
sometimes the mind with wisdom. We concentrate on the mind, not the anger. So this means that we apply the mindfulness of mind. And the last one is quite important. And especially after sitting, especially after, especially for those who are new to uh, practice meditation, you have a lot of distraction, agitation, restlessness. So whenever these kinds of things happen, acknowledge it. They occur with the mind, but we concentrate on the mental activities like a distraction, agitation, and these are called the five hindrances. Whenever any one of them occurs, acknowledge it as it is. So this is the way to um, practice the mindfulness of mind object or the mental activities. Even sometimes you feel a sleepy. Whenever you feel sleepy, you may open your eyes. You may move your hands or even massage yourself in order to um, feel better, to feel fresh. And then go back to practice again. If the sleepiness is very strong, when you practice on your own, you may stand up and do walking meditation. So in conclusion, meditation can practice according to the four foundations of mindfulness. We can use these four foundations as the way to develop mindfulness. In all the way, meditation can be done in four big parts: standing, walking, sitting, and lying down. And if you really to if you really want to improve your mindfulness, you may try to uh, do daily activities like uh, when you are drinking, when you are eating, when you are uh, stretching your limb, when you are stretching your hand or whatever. Acknowledge it as it is. So from now on, we are going to uh, meditate together um, for about 15 minutes, at 15 to 30 minutes. If you feel uncomfortable or if you let go numb, stay for a while, be a break for a while, and then if you want to change, you can change your uh, posture slowly and mindfully. Do, do not change abruptly because this may uh, break mindfulness. So it is better to keep mindfulness continuous. You will hear the bell as the side of the end of our meditation session. So please continue sitting until you hear the bell. <laughs>